Here we have discussed the importance of balancing our attention, scanning to get the big picture, avoiding fixation, and not succumbing to the risk of cognitive overload, and using team members to improve our blind spots and not miss important inputs. Cognitive aids and checklists can help reduce the number of inputs and balances our attention so that we may deal with a crisis. So Jessica, in your experience, uh, what cognitive aids have you found helpful? David, every day in my practice as an anesthesiologist, I use a transport checklist. This is important, especially if I'm uh, transporting a critical patient to an intensive care, to make sure that I have everything that's needed in case there's an emergency along the way. An important part of the checklist process is cross-checking. What's an example of an item that you use the cross-checking for? Okay, so as I'm preparing the patient, if they're intubated, I know that I'm going to need an oxygen tank for transport, and so that's going to be requested. But as part of the checklist, we're checking that the tank is full, that it's connected properly, and that oxygen is flowing so that our patient is safe. For our next activity, we'd like you to read this blog post on checklists as cognitive aids. The author, Mike Loria, emphasizes that checklists are aids and not crutches and certainly not substitutes for clinical judgment. A good checklist as a cognitive aid is concise and only includes the critical items. Good checklists don't include tables, doses, or diagrams. Those are references. Finally, we'd like to hear from you. Do you think that cognitive aids are helpful in a crisis? The use of cognitive aids and checklists as cognitive aids can be controversial in medicine. So in this activity, we'll also provide a link to a blog that debates the use of cognitive aids during resuscitation. After reading the blog, how do you feel about cognitive aids now? For those of you who changed your mind, why did you change your mind? Take our poll and let us know.